Hey Fuji fans, there's a lot of interest out there about how you program custom settings into the Fujifilm X-Series cameras. After all, that's one of the reasons why we love these cameras so much, is the ability to get a very specific, creative look straight out of the camera that would require hours of raw processing out of other cameras. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly what to program into your custom settings because that's not going to improve your photography. You shouldn't just be copying exactly what other photographers are doing. So what I'm going to give you here is a method in which you can figure out what kind of style, what kind of look, what kind of feeling you're going for in your photos, get that in your head and then transfer that from your head into the camera by programming it a specific way that meets your goals. Now this methodology is going to work for every genre and style of photographer, whether you're a landscape photographer, a wedding photographer, street documentary, portrait, it's going to work for everybody. And in order to get the most out of this method, you are going to need two things before we start. And the first one is you will need to download and install the Fujifilm X-RAW Studio onto your computer. And I'll provide a link to that download from Fujifilm in the description for this video. The second thing that you're going to need is a collection of Fujifilm RAW files from the specific model of camera that you have available. Fujifilm X-RAW Studio only works with raw files and you're going to need to plug in the camera to your computer to make it work and so if you have a raw file created from an xe3 for example it will not work if you plug that in with an xt2 so you're going to need the same model of camera that those raw files were created from so if you don't have a collection of raw files right now that's perfectly fine take a week change your settings so that they do record raw plus jpeg go out and photograph the favorite subjects that you like to photograph and get a collection of raw files that you want to use in order to create your own custom recipes for the looks and the uh, subjects that you most often photograph so the first thing that you're going to need to do and most of you have probably already done this step is to identify the styles subjects and genres that you like to shoot so if you're a landscape photographer, maybe you have uh, seven different landscape styles that you really enjoy. You might have some very saturated golden hour type photography with low contrast, maybe some high contrast, flatter saturation photographs that you take in midday, maybe a different look in morning, or you split your uh, landscape photography processing into just color and black and white. And within those, you have different styles of color looks and different styles of black and white looks. And we are going to have seven different recipes that we can make in our Fujifilm cameras. The next step is to identify other photographers who also have the same style and look and feeling that you enjoy in your own photography. And this is just going to help uh, broaden, um, give you more ideas of what kind of recipes you want for these different styles. So for the sake of this example, let's say that we are a travel photographer and we have a visual style that is very similar to that of Steve McCurry. Or if we don't even have a visual style yet, but we want our photos to have that same kind of look, we're going to study his photographs. And if we have a body of work um, along that same style, study how we process our own photos. And as we go through them, we're going to make a list of the characteristics, the visual characteristics of that photo. So grab a notepad or a post-it note, and on that list, you're going to write down the genre, which is the recipe or style that we are creating as we do this research. The next thing that we are going to write down is the color balance or tone, then the color characteristics, then the highlight and shadow tones, and finally the sharpness and the grittiness of the photo. And I'll explain all of these as we go through this example. So this genre that we are creating is for general travel photography. We're just going to write that down, general travel photography. As we go through Mr. McCurry's Instagram page, and you can go through, you know, books, portfolio, website, Instagram pages, just to get a good feel of the style that you enjoy and want to create with this preset. So we're going to look at the color balance of all of these photos first. 
And what I notice is that for the most part, they have a fairly neutral white balance. They're not too warm, they're not too cool. If anything, maybe they are slightly on the warm side, but it's not too exaggerated. So I'm gonna write down on my list for color balance, neutral to slightly warm. And next I'm going to look at the characteristics of the colors in these photographs. And what I see is that they're not overly saturated. The colors are bright and rich and vibrant, but as a whole, the photos themselves do not have a lot of saturation. The blues and the reds especially are very, very rich in these photos. If you look at these uh, boys in the middle, for example, their red robes are very bright, but the rest of the photo uh, doesn't have a whole lot of saturation. And you see the same thing as you go through the rest of the photos. Not a ton of saturation, but some very bright, rich colors. And so I'm going to go to my list and for color characteristics, I'm going to write down normal saturation, rich colors, reds and blues. And you can use plain English here. Use some descriptor so that when you go back to this list later on, you know exactly what your words mean as you are describing the colors in these photos that you see. The next thing we're going to look for are the highlight and shadow tones. And this is the general contrast of the photo, but we're breaking it down into the shadows and the highlights. That is to say, how dark are the darks and how bright are the brights? How much contrast is in those two areas? And as I look through these photos, what I see are some very rich shadows. Those darks are quite dark. However, the highlight areas are kind of flat. So there's a lot of contrast in the shadows, not a lot of contrast in the highlights. So on my list for the highlight tones, I'm going to write down fairly flat. And then for the shadows, I'm just gonna write deep shadows. And the final thing that we are looking at is the sharpness and the grittiness. So we're going to apply this to our sharpening and our noise reduction in our custom presets. So as I look at these photos, I see that they are not overly sharpened. They're not soft, but you don't look at them and say, wow, they went crazy on the sharpening algorithm here. So fairly soft sharpness. And then I don't like a lot of noise reduction anyways. So, you know, I don't like that plasticky effect. So I'm just going to leave noise reduction at a minimum. So we have our list. We've written down the characteristics of the photographs of the style that we want to create. And you can do this for, you know, you have seven different custom presets that you can make in your cameras. So you can do this for seven different looks or seven different styles that you want to create within your camera. And the next step is where the fun begins. We are going to take those styles and those looks that we've identified and try to recreate that in Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. And first we need to harvest some RAW files. So we're going to go into Lightroom or whatever other browser you use, sort the photos, make sure we're only getting the model of the camera that we're going to plug into our computer for this exercise. So I'm just gonna filter out Make sure only my X-T2 photos are displayed since that's what I'm going to use for this example. And just copy these files, copy the raw files. So show in Finder, copy that. And then I've created a folder on my desktop called raw experiments. And you're going to paste those files into a folder that you're going to use as a collection point for these files that you're going to experiment with. Just again, collect a sampling of photos that you think that you would use with this preset that you're creating. So we're gonna open up Fujifilm X-RAW Studio, connect our camera to our computer and turn it on. You'll see the status of your camera up here in the upper left-hand corner. Now this is not going to be a tutorial about how to use Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. That would make this video way too long. So instead what we're going to do is use this menu over here on the right side to figure out how we can apply those uh, settings, that list, that study that we just made and try to get a preset that matches what we just did. The menu on the right shows all of the settings that you can program into the X-T2 because I have an X-T2 plugged into the computer right now. If you had a newer X-Pro3, you would see a lot more options there like color chrome effect, dynamic range priority, color chrome FX blue, clarity. Uh, it's all going to depend on which camera you have plugged into the computer. 
So first we need to navigate to that folder where we dropped all of those raw files. And when you open that up, you'll see a list of the thumbnails on the bottom of the screen. And if any of those are grayed out for any reason, it means it's because they were created with a camera that's different than what you have plugged into your computer right now. So the first thing that we're going to do is just grab a photo. And we said that for this uh, generic general travel photography preset that we want, uh, the first thing was the color balance and the tone. Now, if you wanted to deliberately make your photos warm or cool, you could program a custom temperature white balance to intentionally uh, make those warmer or make them cooler. And we said that our photos were neutral to slightly warm, so I'm just gonna leave that in auto. And the next thing that we wanted to look at were the color characteristics. And for the color characteristics, we're going to play around with both the film simulation. And again, I don't have the time to go into all of these right now, but in the description for this video, I've linked to a blog post where I have a comprehensive comparison of all of these different film simulations that you can select from. Um, and they are going to have uh, different renderings for colors, different saturation and different contrast. And then the other thing that we're going to do is adjust the color option. Positive numbers make it more saturated, negative numbers make it less saturated. So we said that we had a fairly normal saturation level in the photos that we were looking at. The colors were bright, and in particular, the blues and the reds were really rich. Now, I happen to know that the Astia film simulation produces a lot uh, brighter blues and reds. If we go to the before and after, we have the Astia film simulation on the left, and let's see what happens when we go to Provia on the right. And it's tough to see in this photo right now because it's so zoomed out. So let's uh, see about going in a 50%. And you can see that the Astia on the left, the blue of the lake is more of a blue color and the reds pop out just a little bit more, and that's kind of the style that I was going for. So I'm gonna leave that set to Astia. We'll go back to the normal view with Astia. And I'm gonna leave that color, uh, actually, let's go see if we can saturate a little bit more, plus two. That's probably a little too much. What about plus one? Let's leave it at plus one for now. The next thing that we're going to adjust are the highlight and shadow tones. We said that uh, the style that we wanted had pretty flat highlights and deep shadows. So if we go to the highlight tone, positive numbers increase the contrast in the highlights or shadows while negative numbers make them flatter. So we wanted slightly flatter highlights. Let's go to negative one for the highlights. We wanted a little bit deeper shadows so again, positive numbers increase the contrast, negative numbers will decrease it. Let's try positive two for a little bit deeper shadows. That's probably a little too much. So let's try positive one, leave that there. And then for the sharpness and noise reduction, a positive number applies a lot of sharpening to the photo while the negative number doesn't make it softer. It just doesn't apply as much sharpening. So I'm gonna leave that at negative two also leave the noise reduction at negative two. You can also add grain to the photos. So let's see what that looks like. It just simulates a film grain. If you really want to have a gritty look, you have weak and strong. Let's see what strong does. And I don't really want that in my photos, so I'm just gonna leave that off. So that's how we go through that list and apply it to our custom setting. Once we have that on one photo, we're going to save it. So I'm gonna give it the name General Travel, replace the one that's already there. And I'm gonna to go to another photo and see if those settings would work for another photo. Here's a really different type of photo. Let's go into general travel up here on the upper right and apply that general travel preset to this photo. I think that works. It's got some flatter highlights, deeper shadows, that blue and that robe really pops out. Maybe a little too saturated, so let's see what happens if we drop the 
uh, saturation down to zero. Still gives me some bright colors, but not too saturated. I'm gonna stick with that little adjustment. So I'm going to resave this preset, general travel, yes, overwrite it. And again, do the same thing, go to another photo, drastically different than the previous one. Apply it. Good, the highlight areas in this photo are much flatter. The shadows are pretty deep. Those reds and blues stand out without being too saturated. Let's uh, go somewhere else. Let's try a night photo and see how that preset would look when applied to a night photograph. Good, the uh, highlight area of that fire right here is preserved. We've got some good silhouetting going on. I like what's going on with the color. Let's go halfway around the world and apply that again. We're still getting that look that we wanted. Bright reds and blues, deep shadows, flat highlights. And just remember that we're not trying to get a 100% solution here. You're never going to get a 100% solution. We're trying to identify a starting point. Get to that 75 or 80 or 85% solution. If you have a preset where um, it's designed for golden hour landscape photography, you are going to go out during the golden hour and set that preset. And before you start taking these photos, maybe you're just not feeling the saturated colors that day. So you're going to go to that landscape preset that you have and maybe dial down the color one or two points. But the rest of it's already going to be set up for you. So now all you do is just copy down your settings. I put them in an Excel spreadsheet because I'm a nerd, but you can just plug them straight into your camera. Go out and practice, take some photos, come back and make small adjustments based on what you've done out in the field. The final thing to remember is that your styles are going to change throughout your life as a photographer. They should change. If you study painters, painters from every generation, every genre, their styles change from the beginning of the career to the end of their career. And the same should happen to you as a photographer if you are advancing your own photography. I hope you all got something out of this video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd share with your Fujifilm friends. Subscribe to this channel as I'll be releasing a lot more videos like this. This is just one of the fun things about Fujifilm cameras is how much we can play around with what the different looks are like in the camera using these film simulations and custom recipes. So go out, practice, bring back some photos into XROS Studio, tweak the settings, um, keep doing that, and you will get closer and closer and closer to your own creative vision, eventually to the point where you might never have to open another raw file on the computer ever again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.